but that's left me with a load of parts and I can't have a load of parts so top case bottom case original drive which was rusted to hell which I've taken apart clean seven ways to Sunday see if we can get that going got a crappy old keyboard yellow to hell which I'll show you how to sort out bent as well but it works so we're using paint can cam now take these keys off you want to apply even pressure Probably that way and that way, like that. Keep going, keep the springs. We're going to soak the springs with WD. Yeah, so there we are so far. What you're going to find this key and these will have these metal things. So pop the springs and then flip them around and either wiggle them off or if you can pop them out but don't force them, don't force anything. All the keys off, all the metal bits including the clips in there, it's going to be WD ported. The day didn't seem to be that great so second attempt is with a proper UV light bulb. Okay, so the retrobite's getting going, still going, the motherboard's arrived and this motherboard has got some really bad corrosion. It's an A500 motherboard. It was literally a few quid off eBay, sold for parts. Quite a lot of damage there. All right around here. There was no battery on this. I don't know why. A bit of corrosion there. It's loose. And the back. Not too bad at the back. Joystick ports squiff for some reason. And the corrosion comes down this side. It's a rev 6A. Quite bad there. And then on the flip side. It's quite bad along there. Quite bad along there. Quite bad there. It's mostly on the outer edges of the board. So I don't think it's battery, I think something else has happened here. Or oh, there was a RAM expansion and batteries all gone around the edge. But happily the middle of the board seems okay, so perfect candidate for a repair job. So I've given this a once over with the old isoprop, I'm gonna give it a second go now, I'd like to go out. A toothbrush on the edges and then cotton buds and press all that out. So stage one, isoprop, small flexible wire brushes, toothbrush, P600 wet and dry. I'll give you an idea of how bad it is. That's the solder mask off and then underneath, that is how deep it is. Under there, all green. Under there. That's the bit that's looking a bit better afterwards. So I'll keep going on. Come back. That's how much damage there was. So you can get the real scale of this corrosion, look at that. Continuing on the other side. See how easy it lifts enough. Run. Board all cleaned up. Traces are rotten all cleaned up. Traces are going to be applied over with solder and uh, then sealed with lacquer and the exposed copper areas are going to be sealed with lacquer or nail varnish, clear nail varnish, don't know yet. Flux pen, I learnt this off in someone else's YouTube video, got no idea. Along that trace with a flux pen, that's very important. 
clean the tip of the soldering iron, get it nice and hot, got it at 450 nearly. Bit of solder on the tip. Like that. And then we go over our trace. And it sticks, sticks to the trace. And drag it out. Like that. So you do that for any traces that you've exposed the solder. And then we seal it up with a mask or the varnish or whatever. Trace done there. Be quick. You can see where it's linked up there. That little bump there is where the solder mask is still on. All the way along there, all the way along there, all the way along there, there. We're free there. And they're all done at once. If you, as long as you use the um, flux, they won't stick together. I will test them for continuity, but just drag them lengthwise and they should fly with the what's left of the old trace. There's a couple there as well, but um, it's cleaned up initially with isoprop and cotton buds and a wire brush and cotton buds I'm going to rinse the whole board anyway, I've got more soldering to do so I'll do that later, do the other side, traces After three days under the UV light, it's time to check out the retro guy Haha <laughs> Gloves on, goggles on Ok so that's the first lot and they're not too sad In this section with an inch of its life with contact cleaner spray and isoprop This is where we've put that trace. We're just filling it up. Find some nail varnish that matches that colour, and look, she did. So, ask a girl, and they'll get it right. It's both sides of the board lacquered. Okay, so, I decided to try out the nail varnish on top. You can always take it off with ice prop. Keyboard retro bright and reassembled, pretty happy with that. Little recap, plug it in, see if it works. Okay, so I guess that means we're good. So this is a PC floppy drive out of a really old computer right in a cupboard. Um, take the shield off. Um, this particular one had little lips that you have to bend up and then pull it off and then you'll get in there. When you do get in there, you're looking out for the following things. This particular drive is a Samsung drive. And I followed some instructions on Amiga. So I, it's a different Samsung, but fortunately the board looks similar. Lucky, I just had it in the cupboard, so I opened it up and it happens to be one of them drives. Now what you're looking for is these jumpers, DC ready. That's a zero ohm resistor on the DC line, we're going to switch that to the ready line. Um, and, wait a minute, just here, focus. Is it DS0, DS1? It's currently solely jumped to DS1, so we're going to move that to DS0. And we're going to move this to the ready line. Hopefully, that's it. Some people talk about putting DC to pin 2. And the pins are basically labelled. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 33, 34. But we're just going to move <coughs> that solder bridge, this zero ohm resistor across. And then right at the front here, there's a, a capacitor, or, or actually a bridge, C16, that, that is connected. We're going to cut that trace if we have to. If we don't, we won't bother. And what that will do is make it read um, the Amiga discs without having to put tape over them. A bit of continuity test, make sure we've broken the bridge. And my eyes are not where they used to be. And we are all here, here, and here. We've broken the bridge, there's nothing between them two. That would be, make sure, nothing between them two. And that new bridge, right, turn that on. Bridge those two. I'll check, make sure it's still not bridged to DS1. No. It's a Jerry Morse tapper. No, anyway, we haven't um, bridged that, so that's fine. 
Look, it's got zero ohm resistor. You can use a bit of wire, it's only a zero ohm resistor, so. C16, which is there, just underneath the two, on the, next to the screw. Uh, soldered a jumper wire in between um, DC, which is disc change, not direct current, and pin two. So now it can recognise when a disc put in and it can swap discs. I wasn't happy with that mod, so I'm going to try a different method. This is a drive ad line around, and fortunately, it's the one that can work with a crossover cable method. Sony MPF 520 uh, cleaned all the crap out of it, owned it up, cleaned it all out, take the top off it, just stick a screwdriver up those tabs, and put the front off carefully, clean it all out, clean the heads. And it's actually reading better stock than all that messing about. Jumpers on the left hand side there, and what we're doing is <coughs> a standard floppy cable. Do it the straight end, not the twisted end. So, because I've, I've cut that end off because that's no good. So, that leaves us with this cable, which is the main cable. And what we've got to do is we've got to cross over 34 and 2. So, using an uh, exacto knife, I've just gone down here carefully. Separate out those cables, and then I'm just going to literally solder, bridge that to that, that to that. A bridging piece of wire to heat shrink. We'll try that out. First half of our crossover cable. By the way, you can test. If you cut the cable like I have, you can test which pin corresponds by just putting your multimeter on the pin on the drive, and then going along these, and then work out which one it is. So that's uh, first part of the crossover cable there. And do the other side. That's a crossover cable complete shrink wrapped. I can't do it because I haven't got enough hands, but just check the continuity is right. So now that I've got a pin in the end of that, so that now goes to two, which was 34. And then the other way around must be right because there's only two of them, so just check that. So I just sealed it up with tape now. Some of the plastic dips gone missing for a minute, but let's see if it works first. And it's looking good. The disc that wasn't working is working. So let's try and load up with a, a, a multi disc game, and if that works, the whole thing's sorted. Okay, so I loaded Xenon 2, which is a game I thought was a two disc game, and it did this swap, no problem at all. And uh, there we go. On paint can cam again, we're going to replace uh, this guy because there's corrosion on these. These are three-legged field capacitors, 100 volts, and they're labeled 471. There's a bag of them. 471 means 47 and 10, so 470 picofarads. And these are 100 volts, same as the other one. I'm going to put them around the same way. I'm not sure if they're polarised or not. The same way around the right and the same way around. Now, because that was an area of corrosion here, it's leaked up into the capacitor, turned it green, and I've sealed it up with um, <coughs> varnish. So, taking that off the riser prop before it desoldering. So, it's out, you can see the corrosion on the bottom. It actually wasn't that bad, but I won't swap it over anyway. You can see it's sort of worked its way up somehow. So, that's coming out replaced and nice and clean. All the way through, routed it out with the hook, both sides. That's why I took it out, it shows the corrosion a bit better. That's now in, tidy it up. Let's sit tidy it up. Let's sit tidy it up. Make sure there's no bridging. Get the flux off it. We've got that uh, connector that was bent up off with the solder sucker. You have to suck this heat out of those. It takes a while. Get them clear, pinch them in, pinch them in, so all the solder off each one. 
go really gently. We haven't lifted any traces, that looks shit at the moment, but I haven't lifted any traces. Clean it up. And there we go, looking good. Looking good. We can get that back on, a new one. So that's through and locked in. A little bit more aligned, I don't know, put that last one on, but not very good. Debate whether to do this one, I might just clean it up for now. That one's done. That's now on. The only difficult bit of these bits, probably because these bolts are on, so I'm going to take the bolts off so I can get it to flow a bit better. The actual connections are good. Things level. Seem pretty. Okay, so I stopped being a wuss and I took the edge connector off. And it took ages because the corrosion had started to set in on a few of the pins. And I could tell because I could see the green under there. So I'm going to clean that up. Go cleaned up. If what I could. Probably gone a bit over the top, but you know, might as well do it properly. Back on, tested all the continuity, it's fine. Plugged in the memory expansion that I fixed in the other video. And we're now showing 887224 memory free, so yeah, I haven't cross wired anything, that's all good. Well, I think you'll agree. Memory expansion must work because this game requires one megabyte, so that's all good.